Hello there from Erbil, the capital of Iraqi Kurdistan. I'm going to be traveling around this autonomous region of Iraq by myself. I'm no longer with my tour company, Bill Weekend, who showed me from Baghdad down to Basra and then up to Mosul, doing it independently, as can you. And right here is the main square of what is one of the oldest cities in the world. The citadel is just behind me. People don't live in it anymore, but they used to. I should probably say before I get exploring that I took a shared taxi by myself from Mosul across the border between the governors, which cost me 10,000 Iraqi dinars, so about five pounds, to share the taxi with a few other people. And you only have to show your passport at the checkpoints if you have a visa for southern Iraq or mainland Iraq, then you can enter Kurdistan fine. And if you don't, then you can also get visa on arrival for Kurdistan if you are one of the passports that qualify. Coming down from the citadel, I am walking into the city's main square and I thought I would just give you a little bit of context about Iraqi Kurdistan and Kurdish people. Iraqi Kurdistan is an autonomous region, like I said, and it's a majority Kurdish area. They speak Kurdish, they're Sunni Muslims, not Shia. In southern Iraq, it's majority Shia, but there are Sunni Iraqis as well. This is the only country where they actually have a form of government, their own parliament, their own autonomy. But you could argue that they are still under the control of Baghdad, really. But I don't want to delve into politics too much. Just know that Kurdish people are split across four countries. Turkey, Iraq, Syria, and Iran. Iraq is one of them, and here they have their own autonomous region. And culturally, in many ways, it's quite similar to the rest of Iraq, but also there are many differences as well. And I'm sure we'll explore a bit more of that as I get on with these videos. Up to the fountain in the middle of the city here. Loads of people around as it's a weekend and a good atmosphere to start filming. I think I'm gonna head into the bazaar first as there's a lot of interesting stuff to see. Okay, sorry, Bazaar, from what I've read, sells a little bit of everything from carpets and rugs to dried fruits to Kurdish sweets. First glimpses and there is tea and coffee available. I really love its architecture and history. I think that similar covered bazaars in Iraq are also called Kesari bazaars. It literally translates to covered bazaar. Colourful though, and reminds me slightly of the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul, only of course the colours are slightly different. An array of nuts and sweets here, which looks so good. Probably not too expensive either. You can see how there are many different lanes you can branch off into. As it is a bit of a maze at times, but an exciting place to sort of just get lost and wander around as I am currently doing now. Dates on a moving cart. You can see various men around the city dressed in the traditional Kurdish clothes of which can be bought inside the bazaar and many other places of course. I'll see if I can find a stall that is selling them and making them 
atmospheric lane here with an old tea shop this looks incredible i think i will probably come back here later here we are where the traditional kurdish clothes are being made a whole lane of them salam alaikum wow salam alaikum also some women's uh headscarves too wow this place is amazing see that man in the red he is going around giving people chai from shop to shop so this man here has politely let me film him making the kurdish clothes and he's also wearing a form of the traditional outfit With the Kurdish traditional clothes you'll always see the men wearing a waistband. The women tend to wear black. If I see it later I will point it out. All these different threads and colours inside the maze. If we go a little bit further inside you can see the waistcoats of which this man is not currently wearing one. Really cool to see and make it up close here. So somewhere in the bazaar is a place to try arguably one of the best kebabs you'll find in Iraq and in the city of Erbil. It's called Kebab Yasin, and I'm just looking for it now. It's hidden somewhere in the maze and trying to find it isn't necessarily easy, but I guess I can just ask for directions. Here we go. This is Kebab Yasin. It's always busy. There is a bit of a queue at the moment and inside it's chock-a-block. You can see them preparing the kebabs right there. The tomatoes and the meat which they roll out the window in front of you. Open kitchen which is always good to see. <laughs> Heading inside now. <laughs> okay. It's really busy as you can see. Here we go. Spas. So I'm inside now and this is the kind of place where you rub shoulders with everybody else at the same table, uh, you share the bread. And I've ordered two kebabs. I actually waited a little bit longer until about 3 p.m. this afternoon to make sure I had a little bit more space to vlog the experience because I know how crowded it gets around 12, 1. So if you want to avoid that, then come later. If you want to be in the crowds, then come earlier. Welcome, bro. The first time you come here? First time, yeah. So in Erbil, first time? First time in Erbil, yeah. Welcome, for sure. Uh, Britannia. Uh, yeah. Is this the best kebab in Erbil? Yeah. The famous you think so? The famous one. Ones. Okay, okay. There's yeah. a second branch, it's in 100 meter street. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. It's near to Ankara. Oh, I see. So the kebab has now arrived. It looks crispy and tender. So the kebab is coming with tomatoes and pickles, some small chilies, onions that you can bite on as well, and of course the uh, bread. Um, so let's get stuck in. Break off some of the kebab and try it. Wow. It might be the best kebab I've ever had. It's crispy and charred on the outside, but then it kind of melts in your mouth once you uh, taste the softer inner part of it. You can see why it's so popular. Uh, every table is always full. People coming in and out all the time 
and there's always a queue outside. I think one of my favorite things about this place is that you get to know everybody at the table, you all start chatting, it's very social and uh, you just get to hang out. Wow. I've been speaking to all these guys. Wow. The best kebab. The best kebab? Yes, yes. Best kebab in Albi. So, yeah, they say so. I think I agree as well. It's definitely the, the best kebab. Finishing the kebab there, I am going to wash it down by heading back to that really authentic looking tea place just by the Kurdish clothes street where they made the men's Kurdish clothes as it looks so interesting. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find my way back there. Find a free spot. Over here in the corner by what looks like the owner. Seems like a good place. Spas. So I've just found out the name of this place is called Mam Kali and it has been open I believe for a long time as it is right here in the heart of the bazaar. It's built into it in fact and with all these old pictures you would think that it has to be a number of years old and have a lot of history and like I said I just found out that is the previous owner. He has unfortunately passed away. Um, but you can see some younger pictures of him all over the walls as well and like other places in Iraq that I've been to pictures and photographs of the past depicting the history really cool leaving the bazaar now and heading towards one of the most famous cafes in the city and the oldest or one of the oldest I believe. There is something very freeing about now being alone again, traveling alone again. As much as I recommend taking a tour for southern Iraq, Kurdistan really doesn't need it. You can go around by yourself and it's kind of nice to make a vlog now without anybody next to me. I don't have to worry about wasting anyone's time. I can relax and just wander where I please. This is Machko Cafe. The cafe I was talking about. Let's head inside and get a drink. Built into the wall of the citadel itself. Salam alaikum. You'll find men reading newspapers and smoking shisha on these old benches, playing games and portraits on the walls. Uh, chai. One tea. Yeah, one tea. Spouse. Shisha here. So now that we're in Kurdistan, it's no longer shukran for thank you. It's Kurdish, which is spas, a bit like the Russian spasiba. You just take off the end. And shisha behind me with these two guys uh, having their tea. I've just ordered mine and closer look at some of the portraits behind I guess notable Kurdish people and historical photos. Spas. <laughs> Chai is here. As usual the sugar taking up a large proportion of the bottom of the glass. There is a really cool atmosphere to this cafe. Smoke from the shisha blowing around and men playing games and uh, a really really interesting vibe that you can probably only find in a few sort of places here in Erbil and this is probably one of them. Just as I was having my tea I was approached by all these guys from Zaho which is in the north of Kurdistan not far from Duhok in between Duhok and the uh, Turkish border 
Um, so you're just coming here for one day, like a day trip? Yeah. Yeah. So. Just hanging out, drinking chai, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So. Nice, nice. So welcome. I've come across the section where you can find the tasbih, which are the prayer or worry beads they're sometimes called. They're really popular especially here in Iraqi Kurdistan. They are popular, like I said, all over the Middle East. And they have 99 beads because God has 99 different names in Islam. The men here are hand-making them on the street alongside many others, selling them as people walk by. <laughs> So I just picked up a few different uh, prayer beads to take back home for myself and my family. Only around two or three thousand dinars per set of prayer beads. You see people fiddling these between their hands all day every day around here it's like just tossing them and using them to kind of de-stress I suppose they were once used for religious reasons and I think these days it's more just uh, as they say worry beads to play around with and have something in your hand to uh, occupy yourself now heading back up to the citadel to have a look inside <laughs> Wandering around inside the citadel now, it's been the center of the city ever since the very beginning. Hala is what they call it in Kurdish, not Erbil. I wouldn't say the citadel is anything particularly special. A lot of it's closed off and there's renovations going on, a lot of red tape around, but uh, an interesting place to observe for the history and the fact it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site gives it some weight, I suppose. Coming out the other side of the citadel, you'll get great views of the northern part of the city. From the other side of the citadel, I took a taxi a short while away to Iskan Street, which is the street I've been told to visit around night time. I think at the moment it's still slightly early. It's full of restaurants that are open 24 seven and it has great shawarma, falafel, all the usual trimmings. I can see some street food ahead. So let's take a walk down and then I'll wrap up this video. These men still setting up for the evening's onslaught of hungry visitors. You can see some of the street food there. Nice looking restaurant here. This one is called Habib. You can probably just take a plate and then tell them exactly what you want. Let's keep on going. Shawarma on the spit there. <laughs> Stuff bubbling away. Following this video, I will be traveling to another part of Iraqi Kurdistan staying with a subscriber of mine called Ali who messaged me 
and offered me to stay with him in his hometown of Soran and from there we'll be visiting the mountains near Iran so lots to look forward to here in Kurdistan I'm going to end things here for this video I don't want it to drag on for too long if you are interested in seeing more from Iraqi Kurdistan on my Instagram stories and posts then it's at Jason Billum Travel and I will see you on the next video. Peace.